Hello, and you are listening to the Book Was Better podcast, the podcast where we talk about the book of the film. I'm Luke. I'm Lizzie. And this week we're talking about Dunstan Checks checks in. In. Ow! being incredibly excited about oh. Dunstan Checks In. And you can, I'm sure you know why I'm excited. I know exactly why you're excited. So there's only two things I ask for in from a, a in book. A film, in yeah, a book. in a film, yeah. in a book, either or. One, decent character story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not asking much, okay. I should say, by the way, this is an and or and <laughs> situation. Or. <laughs> doesn't have to be both. Yep. Second thing, crazy monkeys crazy going monkeys. ape shit. Like, <laughs> I love that. And look, Let's say right off the bat, I know a, an orangutan's not a monkey. It's an ape. It doesn't have a oh. tail. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, but... Oh, I've I've gone off on way the wrong tangent then. The thing is, the filmmakers, they didn't care that it's not a monkey. Jason Alexander didn't care that it's not a monkey. <laughs> he did not care. The word monkey gets said a billion times in this thing. That's why I thought it was a monkey. I think, yeah, well, it's, it, they make a very compelling argument for and it being a, a monkey. And a gorilla. And um, a little Asian man at one point. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Well, orangutan means old man of the forest, right? Yeah. Or just man of the forest? Uh, orange man so of the something forest? Something to do with orange peel? Orange peel of the forest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Crazy monkeys going monkeys. ape shit certainly happens in this. And I've got to say, even when I'm frowning, like I'm reading this book, I'm frowning. I'm going, this isn't a very good book <laughs> based on not a very good movie. And then Dunstan <laughs> just does something so crazy. He goes so ape shit that I couldn't help but smile and have a great time. Warmed your heart, did it? And run around and, and act like uh, I was Dunstan as well. I remember this film uh, being released. Do you have any recollection of that? I have zero recollection of that. I did not know anything about this film until I found a copy of it on YouTube, which had like maybe three quarters of the screen visible, mm. and it was blurry. So I'm pretty sure I know which character was Jason Alexander. But I'm not fully sure. We'll, we'll find out. I'll tell you my Dunstan story. I'm going to check in with it. Yeah. Uh, when this film... I don't remember it being at the cinema, but I remember it hitting new release on VHS. Mm-hmm. And this is 1996. And my friend and I, we were 1996 20. Mm-hmm. And one of my favourite shows at that point, 1996, is 1996. Seinfeld. Yep. Love it. Yep. Just think it's really funny and I really like... George. I like Jason Alexander. So, and I also like, even back then, I like crazy uh, monkeys going ape shit. Like, oh, it's really? something you're kind this of born a... with. Yeah. Oh, I, this isn't something that just happened with Jumanji. No. So, in my head, I'm thinking Jason Alexander, George Costanza, who I love, mm-hmm. plus an ape. This is going to be like the best film of all time. <laughs> yeah. And we just get really content. And I don't know why, because look, I had enough film knowledge and had seen enough films to know that. Really, writers and directors are the things that you should be going and seeing a film for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. By 1996, you're an adult. You, yeah, because actors... You should be able to make this, this decision. Actors are puppets, essentially. Yeah. Just like this orangutan. Yeah, is, it's a puppet. Uh, is, is, a, is a puppet, yeah. <laughs> it's a glove puppet. No, it's a, no I, think it, I think it is a real orangutan for the most part, isn't it? Pretty sure. Yeah. You would have been hard for you to see on YouTube, but it very fuzzy. You probably thought Jason Alexander was the orangutan for half of it. But I got quite confused about halfway through. Anyway. Uh, but that I don't know if that was YouTube's fault. Probably. I would have to check the new terms and agreements. But I think that I was expecting, here's Jason Alexander, and he's like, he's got monkey trouble. He's just like, oh, yeah. this is ape. And the ape's doing all crazy things, and they're interacting a yep, lot. Yep. So we build up this hype, and we're like, that's a Jackson! Yeah! <laughs> And we, like, run, and we get it, and we have drinks, and we're like, don't And we're running around like this. Like, <laughs> that's an orangutan impression that nobody could see. We're just thinking, this is going to be great. And um, my friend starts calling it Dunstan Chucks Up, which then becomes even, like, funnier. It's like, yeah, we're going to watch Dunstan Chucks Up. And then I think we watched this thing into silence. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And it was just like, whoa, that's, yeah... I think, like, a little bit of innocence died that day. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's a really odd film. I don't know who it is pitched to. And Jason... Is it for kids or is it for adults? Yeah, very much like a kid's film. Uh, and Jason Alexander doesn't really interact with this uh, orangutan very much at all. In fact, he's he not even really in the movie. He doesn't really do much. Movie. Yeah. He's in a suit. That's true. He does wear a suit very well. And he had glasses on? I don't think he has glasses. I think he was trying to shed that. I'm not George Costanza now. I'm Mr. Grant. Yeah. If you came here for George Costanza, you're going to be very disappointed because I've got, there's more to me than that. That's Mm. not what I'm here to do. Yeah. yeah. I'm here to be Mr. Grant, hotel manager. Mm -hmm. Here's my suit. No monkey business. No monkey business, but uh, maybe a little bit of monkey business, (laughs) but not as much as I was hoping. Yeah. We're starting to talk about the um, plot so much that we really should get into the book. Did you know this film was originally planned as a trilogy as well? It was going to be Dunstan Checks In. Yeah, uh, And then Dunstan Checks for Lumps. Uh Uh-huh. Fortunately, he does find something. Oh. And the last one is Dunstan Checks Out. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, really, yeah. That's probably not a kid's film, then. Obviously, yeah. (laughs) Um, And they might have done it. They might have been been straight to video, but with a different orangutan. Yeah, probably. (laughs) The first one wasn't available. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, if it's not a theatrical release, I'm out. <laughs> and this particular book is by um, Dinah Sawyer. Not Diane Sawyer, unfortunately. No. Uh, author of Find Your Way to Jurassic Park. Dinosaur. Dinah Sawyer. You know, I never noticed Whoa. that. Whoa. So that's like where the pseudonym came from. Well, like this is, that's going to be the peak. We're done. Dinah Sawyer. <laughs> author of Find Your Way. I did not pick that up. <laughs> That blew my mind. Fuck, yeah, that is the biggest revelation we're going to have. <laughs> i got to say, I just think it's, like, really sad that somebody else got to write Jurassic Park. Yeah, and, she, and she just got to direct them to that book. Yeah, yeah, she she was the tour guide up to Jurassic Park, but then that's where her... her Essentially, her it's about stops. the helicopter ride. Yeah. Pretty much. And that's, that's what, like, two lines? Yeah. Find helicopter, go on helicopter. And, and she's like... And then he said, welcome to Jurassic Park. And someone editor came in and went, whoa, 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 delete, whoa, delete, whoa, delete, whoa, delete. whoa, 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 whoa. We've got that part. <laughs> you just focus on your part. All right. So this is the beginning of Dunstan Checks In, a, a story about um, a monkey going apeshit. <laughs> I'm looking for a target, Kyle Grant. I'm looking for a target. I hate it when they say how they said it after you've already said it. I'm like... <laughs> You're supposed to read things aloud. Yeah. Especially kids' things. Mm. I'm looking for a target, Kyle Grant whispered into his walkie-talkie. Eleven-year-old Kyle was crouched on a balcony. It overlooked the lobby of the majestic hotel in New York City. Kyle peered down at the wealthy guests as they wandered through the lobby. Several several of them stopped to stare at the marble fountain in the centre of the room. The fountain was gigantic! A statue of Cupid gently spurted water out of its mouth and into a large, round pool. So what would we think this story is about? Like, obviously the imagery here, they're looking for a target, uh, Cupid. I'm thinking it's a love story. Especially when you look at the cover as well. Yeah, yeah, they're hugging. They're hugging. Look at that love. They're BFFs. It's not quite, you know, Cupid, I always think, like, spurting into the, the mouth. Instead, Val- <laughs> Valentine's Day Association. <laughs> Valentine's Day Valentine's special, Day, yeah. 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 Um, well, uh, how accurate is that? Well, uh, you know, I think it is a bit of a love story, really. Yeah? Yeah, there are some, um, undertones here as we continue. Between whom? Well, you'll find out. <laughs> you'll find out, but there's definitely... I, I don't think that's a misleading cover, let's yeah. put it that way. All right. So look, Kyle. Kyle's the young brother, the okay. young kid. This is the kid with the backwards baseball cap on the cover. Yeah, uh, so you know he's adorable. Yeah. And, adorable and probably a little bit mischievous, I'd imagine, as well, because... Uh, but but at heart, uh, mischievous because he's trying to do good in the world. Probably wants to get it, get noticed mm-hmm. by his dad. Yeah. He's very busy wearing a suit. Yeah. Which, it's hard uh, to notice a backwards baseball cap when you're wearing a suit. That's although sure. I do like, you know, normally when dads are busy, they don't have time to play baseball. Like, play well, not even baseball. They don't. Mm. Families don't play baseball. They play catch. Yeah, that's true. Very simple. Yep. Um, a lot. A lot of the times they can't afford like a bat. No, and you need a lot of people for baseball. Don't yep. You? And diamonds. It's but expensive. Th- yes. Yeah. Uh, for the bases. Mm. Uh, but they. Uh, yes. But yeah, the baseball diamond. Yeah. Yeah, from um, the Muppet Caper. 
Yeah. I think. What's that baseball diamond? It's a really big diamond anyway. Yeah. And, and um, you, you do need one. <laughs> Which is what I think Dunstan might be doing is he's trying to find some diamonds <laughs> so that they can yeah, play a pickup game of, of baseball. But instead, this was, is all coming to the other, together now. It yeah. was frisbee in this. Frisbee. Father played frisbee with them. Come on, Dad, we play frisbee. Yeah, we'll play frisbee. Yeah. And they played frisbee in. I didn't write any of this bit down, but they played frisbee in the uh, grand ballroom. Mm-hmm. And um, I kept thinking, God, like you wouldn't want to hit a chandelier or a slimer or something in there. No, you? you definitely wouldn't want to. I wouldn't wish their problems to a monkey <laughs> on a rock. Anyway, Kyle, what is the deal with Kyle? We're getting ahead. It's just, <laughs> I'm just like Kyle. drifting. Um, Kyle and Brian lived at the Majestic Hotel, but they weren't guests. They, Squat, squatters? No. Uh, Refugees. Prostitutes. They lived there because their father, Mr. Robert Grant, was the hotel manager. Their mother had died several years before. Under mysterious <laughs> circumstances. She's Slimer. Yeah, yeah, she's the embodiment. This is the majestic hotel, formerly the Sedgwick. Um, <laughs> and their father was a very busy man. So lots of time, Kyle and Brian had to spend the afternoons by themselves. That's what they were doing at this very moment. So, yes, they're spending the afternoon by themselves in a hotel lobby filled with wealthy guests. And that was that was from the book. That wasn't just you explaining what's going on. That was... That's text from the book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is our introduction. And, and these two kids are monsters, essentially. Like, this is a book about bad parenting. You know, <laughs> Dunstan checks in, a.k.a. control your fucking kids. <laughs> Because they rig the fountain up to spray water at Norm, who is, like, one of the, the like, bellhop bosses that is a bully. Right. And he's bullying their favourite bellhop, who's not the brightest guy. I think his name's Artie. But instead, they end up spraying water all over the guests and their luggage, their expensive luggage. See, mischievous, but good intentions at the at the heart of it. Yeah, but I just think, you know, these people, you're paying, you're on holiday, mm-hmm. you're paying for this, like, this is really bad form. Mm. I would be complaining straight away. You'd be straight on to Yelp. Yeah, well, look, well, I mean, what I mean is this is an attack that leads to a whole lot of um, innocent collateral damage. Mm. So in a way, I guess, uh, it's a very fitting metaphor for American's foreign policy. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just very scattershot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, there he is. Let's get him. Oh, shit. We've just blown up everything. Water, frisbees everywhere. Frisbees everywhere. Um, and there's a dog, like a guy with a dog, and the dog gets wet or something. And it's yeah. just, oh, it's just a nightmare. Um, yeah. Not the kind of hotel that you'd want to check into. So no. I don't know what Dunstan is thinking about at I, this point. Look. Probably hasn't been on Yelp. No. Re- well, that's the problem, 1996. You didn't know. You didn't have That Yelp. information wasn't easily available. You could uh, open a window or a door and yelp it out your complaints into the streets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and that would hit a, a certain amount of people. Yeah. But unless you were prepared to like, maybe drive around with the window down. Mm-hmm. Um, but the problem is there are people already living in that city. You really need to go and do it in other areas for people that are thinking of holiday. Exactly. Or go to the airport. And just shout. Hey, shout. does anyone know the Majestic Hotel? They, they have very bad children there that spray water on our luggage. Can I take my monkey? Yes. No. No. Not allowed. <laughs> well, look, do these kids take responsibility for this uh, um, situation? Do they? You tell me. Uh, I'm guessing no. Well, it's not a bad guess. <laughs> abandoned mission, Brian barked back. Repeat, abandoned mission. Kyle didn't need to be told twice. He jammed his walkie-talkie into his pocket and tucked his skateboard <laughs> under his arm. Walkie-talkie and skateboard. Must be the 90s. He bolted down the back stairs three at a time. When he reached the ramp to the basement, Kyle hopped onto his skateboard. He began picking up speed. 100% right. I mean, this is 1996, and these kids are going the full Bart Simpson. <laughs> Surprised he didn't have a slingshot in his, in his pocket as well. Don't have a cow, man, he yelled Brian. <laughs> what about this? Is this out of context comedy corner? I'm not so sure. Brian pulled him smoothly around the next curve. That's a real leather belt, Brian called over his shoulder. Get your sweaty paws off. And I know that's kind of immature of me, but the, in the book, Kyle just got buried under a pile of toilet paper. So <laughs> I feel like I'm matching the tone of, of this whole... That's, when you, that's how you know. You know he's saying, it's weird. Is it aimed at kids? Is it aimed at adults? Adults don't usually go for the, ah, I've smashed into some toilet paper, help. No, no. But then there there were quite a few, like, just sexy one-liners. Some really explicit sex scenes as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was an actual blowjob. 
<laughs> it's like the brown bunny for a while there. It just goes <laughs> on and on, and you get more and more uncomfortable. So enter the angry father, George Costanza. Mr. Grant pushed open the kitchen door. As always, he wore an expensive blue suit. Not a hair on his head was out of place. Yeah, this is George Costanza, so you could have stopped at not a hair on his head, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, and this is the suit, his defining character trait yep, that you, you mentioned before. Um, I don't recall, George Costanza, Costanza's not a, a big suit guy. No, he's more of a, um, like, button-up, yep. plaid shirt guy. We say but They say button-down, right? I was thinking about this the other day. Is it button-up or button-down? Which way do you button your, your shirts, your plaid you, shirts? You know what? I Standard don't I often I just go through the wash and everything buttoned up. And then I just pull them over my head like a t-shirt. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. I think I button down. Button down. No, I when I button, I button up. But how do you know if you've got the buttons in the right holes then? Well, you have to start at the top so that you can see. No, well... It's down here. It's no. too far away and my eyes are too old. You see, I think... Oh, see, look, my buttons aren't down here and that's because I'm fat. <laughs> but I, I feel like I have to do the bottom first because that's my problem area. That That's the bit that's <laughs> taken all the, the weight. <laughs> once I and I'm usually like I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath. So once yeah. I get to about here, then I can just stop. Cold. I can take it easy. Like if I if I want to just stop early, yeah. I can. But you can't do that the other way around. No, I guess that's true. Unless I want to just I mean, like fan out with my belly like sticking out. This is okay. Which right. sometimes I do for the ladies. Um, <laughs> what about this then? For out of is this out of context uh, comedy corner? Mr. Grant snapped his fingers. Brian began taking off his father's belt. Even though his face was sore, Kyle smiled. Yeah, Brian's going to have a fat, sore face in a, oh. in a minute as well. Oh, um, dear. No, it turns out that uh, <laughs> the belt Brian was wearing actually belonged to his dad, which makes me say, Jesus, look how fat are these kids? So how come he had his... I watched this film. How come he had his dad's belt? Did that happen in the, in the film? In the book, it's because um, <laughs> Kyle Scruffy and Brian, who particularly in the film is a bit of a poon hound, Oh, yeah. uh, he likes to dress fancy. So he's right. all, oh, look at this real leather belt. And then Dad's like, that's my belt, you son of a bitch. And he's like, you married her. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then he, like, beats him with the belt. But in the in the film, he's got, like, the, the 90s, like, chin-length gross boy hair. Yeah. Unwashed. So how how is he thinking that that's fancy? He's I ha- mean, check that guy out. His hair's almost like MacGyver-ish. We're just looking at the, skipping ahead to the photo Actually, section. Actually, it looks a lot like mine, which is a little bit scary. She's um, against the rules. We shouldn't be looking. No, no, not skipping ahead. There's okay. a procedure here. All right, what uh, are we up to? Here are the stakes. This is the state, the, the high stakes of this film. So this is what the film is actually about. Because yep. at this point, I've got no idea. Yeah. There's, there's not even a crazy monkey yet. No, we've met, no. We've met two kids that I can't tell apart. And yes. we've, we've got like a Seinfeld thing. And, and a belt that keeps changing hands. Right, yeah. The, it's about a belt. <laughs> yeah, the, my favourite Hugh Grant film. <laughs> the Crystal Ball is this week. It is the biggest social event of the season. All the important people in New York will be there. Raphael, Loki, Taxi Driver, Cloverfield, <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. De Bruel, I might remind you, own this hotel. They expect the ball to go off perfectly. Perfectly. And if it doesn't... Shit, I hope a crazy orangutan doesn't start chucking up everywhere. <laughs> God, that would be the worst possible thing to happen at the crystal ball. That, w- that would be, definitely. If only this crystal ball could predict the future. They might uh, <laughs> see a lot of pureed banana all over the walls of that ballroom. Uh, yes, and I, I do like that the dad reminds them who owns the hotel. These are people mm-hmm. that they hate, uh, that they interact with on a daily basis. Yep. Uh, really smooth exposition. Yep. Um, and I think the other problem with living in a hotel is that I, I feel like these kids have special needs that just aren't really being addressed. Kyle padded over to the big tropical fish tank and squatted beside it. He pretended that he was swimming along with the fish. Now this was a vacation. A cheap vacation, <laughs> at least. <laughs> the poor neglected children. Yeah. This is how they have to get their kicks. Making their own fun. In the 90s, you had to make your own fun. Exactly. They didn't have the internet. Yeah, until the late 90s. They couldn't go on Yelp and find out what tropical fish <laughs> people were really like. Which tropical fish people didn't like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Clownfish. That's an appropriate name. <laughs> if you see one of these clowns, avoid it like the plague. <laughs> Fighting Nemo? No thanks. 
Uh, and now we get our first taste of the the very creepily voyeuristic Brian. But Kyle could tell that Brian wasn't bored. His brother was watching two pretty girls as they walked through the lobby. One had long brown hair, the other blonde. That's a classic uh, Betty and Veronica fantasy right exactly. there. They both looked about 18 years old. Is That's a good. Is a man of taste. Yeah. And about 18. Yeah, roundabout. Yeah, give or take. He's not going to card them or anything. <laughs> How old is he supposed to be? He's like nine. No, I don't know. <laughs> Kyle, what, what do you reckon? Like 15 or something? 15, 16? Looking I'm at that guessing. picture? I don't know what? how old kids are. I know. He is wearing a suit. That, so. um, that's true. Maybe this is his bar mitzvah. How old are you when you have a bar mitzvah? 13. 13? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like about that. 13. It's probably 13. That's my guess. It's probably in the book, but I didn't see. Uh, it doesn't matter, though. Kyle... He's got other priorities. He's not interested in girls. <laughs> Kyle rolled his eyes. He didn't think it would be any fun to talk to teenage girls, but it might be fun to check out the huge steamer trunk sitting by the reception desk. Yep, so clearly this is before chat roulette. And um, <laughs> considering that this trunk has an orangutan shut in it, it, it probably is filled with a huge steamer right about <laughs> now. And did you notice here? Yeah. Dunstan. The yeah. orangutan. Spoilers, he's inside this trunk. Well, yeah. That's how he gets into the hotel. Yeah. So he doesn't check in. Oh, shit. Yeah. He smuggled in. This whole fucking movie is a lie. Yes. He doesn't even check in. Dunstan does not check in. It's a hotel of lies. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I want my money back. You went and got the guest book, looked in it. He's not there. It's not there. He's not there. He Nothing didn't sign there. in. No. Like, Rupert Everett checks in. Yeah. But he's, he's not done stuff. He says, I'm alone. He's like, he, he's got, yeah. He doesn't even admit to the monkey. Exactly. He bent closer to examine the stickers. He looked at all the stickers on one side of the trunk. Then he walked slowly around to the other side. He had never even heard of so many countries. <laughs> that is the American education system for you. <laughs> and I do hear that their atlases are so much thinner than ours. Oh, really? Yeah. No, not, not that many countries. It's just basically like a centerfold. <laughs> Just, just America. Just America, <laughs> yeah, and and Canada's cropped. America um, and Georgia. Yeah, the uh, the the trunk knocks back, so he's knocking on the trunk. Imagine that you're a curious Why would young you boy. You knock on a trunk. You're knocking on a trunk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna go with that. Yeah. Imagine yeah, you're, you're a young boy. You're in a hotel, okay. and um, you go. Okay. Wait, let me just. <sighs> you're bored. You haven't got a lot to do. Okay. There's no internet. No internet. Or is there? I think there is internet because we're gonna find out about that in a minute. But ninety six, ninety six. There, are, there are definitely Star Wars websites. Yes. With those under construction gifs. Yes. So there is at least one website you can go to. A lot like the second Death Star under construction. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. So imagine you're a young boy. You're at the mm. hotel. You're bored. You're not interested in girls yet. No. Your brother's off... Um, he's interested in girls. He, he's off sniffing around. So you go, let's play a game of Nucky Trunky. Nucky Trunky. Yeah. <laughs> One well, of my favourites. Yes. Yeah, okay. you would have played... We're of the age where we, we, we would have played... I mean, I'm a lot older than you, but we played Nucky Trunky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just it was just coming out of fashion when, yes. when I got yeah, to yeah. it. But no, we, I was, we had a nostalgic... I was in a Nucky Trunky of. team yeah, for a while. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, is I that saw... that what that award over there is? Did yeah, the trophy. The, yeah. yeah, the trophy. I, I actually saw Eli Roth's Knock Knock with Keanu Reeves. And imagine how fucking disappointed I was. <laughs> that did not pan out at all how... <laughs> no. How I didn't... I didn't expect it. Bummer. Um, <laughs> we should get a Knocky Trunky game going. Anyway, the trunk Have is... Have a Knocky Trunky trophy. Yeah. The, 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 the trunk is knocking back. In fact, let me just... That takes me back. Um, and a villain... A yes, technique. I know, I know. And a... Um, look at my knuckles, though. They're gnarled as shit. Um, <laughs> and a villainous dude, this is the aforementioned Rupert Everett, suddenly puts a stop to Kyle's uh, inquisitiveness. Whack! A loud cracking sound split the air as a walking stick hit the trunk. Can I just suggest crack a loud cracking sound? <laughs> just a thought for the author. Also, can we, can we just... Just uh, to refresh anybody's memories, people who perhaps haven't been exposed to Nucky Trunky before, yeah. is hitting it with a walking stick allowed? Or no, it's that... very, very poor form. Mm. Um, especially to interrupt... Look, a, a referee can do it, Yeah. but to interrupt someone else's game of Nucky Trunky with a stick yeah. it is really the height of rudeness. Height of rudeness and borderline cheating, I would think. 
Like you would get you would get a good noise, a good whacking crack. Oh, noise absolutely! There. And um, somebody who doesn't see it mm-hmm. goes, "Oh, what a great knocky trunky happening over there!" Twelve and you're, points right yeah, there. And you're like, "Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah, whoa, hello, yeah." Like, why am I putting my knuckles on the line? Exactly. If this guy's going to bring a stick, wield a big a- stick, sure, but you shouldn't have to use it. That's my <laughs> that's my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so. A uh, loud cracking sound split the air as a walking stick hit the trunk. It barely missed Kyle's fingers. Surprised, he jumped away. Terribly sorry, said a voice with an English accent. Kyle stared up at a tall man. He saw that the man was wearing a fancy suit. Dad? <laughs> and he was smiling. Not Dad. But Kyle didn't like his smile. It didn't seem like a happy smile. Kyle thought the man looked mean. There we go. True to form, immediate distrust of foreigners. <laughs> to be fair, the guy almost hit him on the hand with a walking stick. True, and yes, he did interrupt the game. But uh, this is Lord Rutledge. The Englishman was smiling wildly, widely, and probably wildly, as he spoke to the woman. What woman? A wild woman. Wild woman. But Kyle noticed that he kept staring at her necklace. And I was glad to get this clarification because I was convinced in the film he was checking out boobs. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Two birds, one stone. That's right. Have a look at both. The The hotel owners, Mr. and Mrs. Dubrow. Dubrow? Dubrow. Dubrow? Dubrow. Dip, do, do what? Do whatever. I'm going to say Dubrow because uh, Americans usually go for the, the, the most caveman pronunciation of all. Yeah. Do, or just do do Dunaway. Do Dunaway. Fair, it's Faye, Faye Dunaway, Dunaway, isn't it? And not even looking that old. No, she was looking fine, although yeah. quite soft focus, thanks to YouTube. But she is evil, so don't yeah. don't let don't judge a book by its cover. Okay. The, the pages are evil inside. <laughs> um, they turn up, and Mr. Grant shows some immediate great parenting. Quick, Mr. Grant whispered, "Hide under the desk." Kyle dived under his father's big desk. His father's knees jabbed him in the back as he sat down. What the fuck? It's his son, not his mistress. <laughs> found this really confusing. Actually, the, the book really skips over a lot of stuff. Like, it yeah. really is that I cannot be buggered. I'm just going to crank this out. And um, Mrs. Uh, DeBrow, who is quite prominent in the film, mm. really does not appear much in the book at all. Yeah. And, and I think in the film they pretty much say, oh, she doesn't like kids. we got to hide the kid. Yeah. I think in the book it's just like, get under my desk. And they don't and, explain yeah. it at all. And um, I thought it was going to be a police academy situation for a little, <laughs> for a minute there. But in the film, they don't un- they don't explain why she doesn't like kids and why why she would let kids be in the hotel if she didn't like kids. Like uh, she's a professional, I, right? I, she's I, a hotel owner. I think that's she's, assumed. She's knowledge. all like likes hotels. You've seen and pictures of these kids. What's the like? Yeah, I don't like kids. No, I want that kid under the desk, out of sight, out of mind. But I'm not a hotel owner. Well, it's a look. Don't have a group of kids in a hotel with um, a lot of trunks around. Exactly. Not if you don't. Constant knocky trunks. Not if you don't want them knocked on. Uh, Here are more stakes. If you thought the stakes for the crystal ball were high, well, they just got higher. Five stars is as good as it gets. Kyle's dad agreed. Not anymore, Mrs. Dubrow said. The hotel rating people have decided to award a sixth star to the world's best hotels. Yeah, well, the hotel rating people are drunk. <laughs> because, like, where will that madness end? Just just the money that it would take to do the rebranding alone yeah. makes the, makes this a really stupid idea. And, and then Six stars. Su- ridiculous. Suddenly, lucky seventh star, someone suggests at the, the work Christmas party. And yep. then, oh, okay. Because another hotel turns up. I'm like, well, that's kind of better than that one we gave six stars to. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't end. Just to cap it at five. five. Five is fine. Five or nothing. Come on. Now, we, we debated whether or not the internet was around. And look, Lord Rutledge... Um, is a hacker. No way. He's a late hacker. How elite is he hacking? Hacksaw. How is he hacking? With his moustache? He has a really dumb He hacked moustache. it with his moustache. He yeah. hooked up his laptop computer to his moustache, you know, to the <laughs> hotel's phone line. Then he broke into the hotel computer and he called up a list of hotel guests. This is, this is good um, kid-oriented... Uh, novelization writing though because this doesn't go into any detail at all about how you can l- hook up your laptop computer to a hotel's phone line how you can use that then to break into the hotel computer and call up a, a list of hotel guests so there is nothing here that's telling kids how to be hackers I feel like it seeds the idea though and it probably did inspire a generation of hackers 
And, and maybe even the movie hackers. <laughs> you think that Dunstan checks in inspired the movie hackers? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, it's pretty solid. I'm going to uh, go with that. And then the contents of the trunk are finally revealed, even though we've been talking about them for a while. <laughs> A long, hairy arm came out of the trunk, and then another, and then a large, round face, a face covered in orange hair, the face of an orangutan. The orangutan smiled. He was happy to be out of that dark trunk. He let out a cheerful gurgle. (laughs) This is going to be the weirdest honeymoon ever. (laughs) They are in the uh, bridal suite. It's such a weird film. Such a weird premise. Can you imagine the smell when you open that trunk? Oh, no, I can't. Dunstan well, I kind of can. I've been to a zoo before. Yeah, yeah. That's where he belongs, in a zoo, <laughs> not in a trunk. Uh, and then some role-playing between the, the newlywed couple. A few minutes later, Rutledge came out of the bathroom. He was dressed as a majestic hotel bellman. Dunstan knew what that meant. <laughs> Whenever Rutledge dressed up in a funny outfit, Dunstan had to get to work. On his cock. <laughs> uh, Dunstan was just relieved that he got to dress up as a maid this time and not the gimp. <laughs> Very restrictive. Um, And then, no, you know, so look, not enjoying it. But then suddenly, uh uh-oh, is that what I think it is? Yes, there are crazy monkeys going apeshit! Finally! Dunstan grabbed the ice bucket from the chest of drawers. He put it on his head, (laughs) hooting merrily. (laughs) You think you're funny, don't you, Dunstan? asked Rutledge. He put on a pair of glasses. Dunstan grinned. He began drumming on his ice bucket hat. This just makes me want to put a bucket on my head and bang at it. Um, he's, lo- he's trying, he, now that he's out of the trunk, he can't play Nocky Trunky, so he's playing Nocky Ice Bucket Hat. Nocky Bucky. Nocky Bucky. <laughs> Nocky Bucky. And, um, oh, but Rutledge has a whip hidden in his cane it, to make Dunstan get the fuck back in his trunk. Well, how else would he, would he get an, an orangutan into a steamer? How yeah. would you get that to happen? Well, that's the problem I had. Like in, we said before, this idea is it for adults, is it for kids? And when he's just swinging that whip, going, get the fuck back in the trunk! Get the fuck back in the trunk, my guy! <laughs> I was like, whoa. It was, it was quite full on. Here's a change, though, from the film. Mm-hmm. This is a, definitely a softening of the story. Uh, this takes place in the hotel security room, and, and Murray is the guy that is the security officer. But Kyle could tell that Brian and Murray were only half listening. Their eyes were glued to the monitors. Kyle sighed. He never understood why his brother liked the hotel business so much. I guess he wants to be like Dad when he grows up, thought Kyle. Yeah, bullshit. In the film, they're using this adult and this kid are using the monitors to perv on girls. It's like that um, Sharon Stone movie, Sliver. (laughs) They're like, wow, you're masturbating in the bath. Zoom in. Enhance, enhance. <laughs> yeah, it's really creepy. So, like, is it for kids or is it for, for adults? It's so confusing to me. It's for kid alts. Kid alts. Yeah. For the young at heart. Yes. Or for the really, like, pervy young kids. Yes. I feel like I'm being profiled. <laughs> and Kyle uh, is very suspicious about Rutledge and his command of technology. Kyle frowned. He and Brian carried beepers. That's how their dad let them know when he wanted them. But why does Lord Rutledge have one? Why does Lord Rutledge have one? Kyle wondered. Who's he going to beep? It was impossible to imagine that an Englishman would have anybody who cared about (laughs) them. (laughs) Unfathomable. (laughs) Did you ever have a beeper? No. No, they are completely foreign technology to me. I feel like I didn't even have a mobile phone for quite a while. Yeah. Probably uh, early 2000s, I would... uh, When did Suzanne and I get together? Yeah, probably early 2000s. Hmm. Yeah. Like, maybe 2000 and 2000 or 2001. Yeah. Something like that. And didn't have an iPhone until about seven years ago, maybe Mm. six years ago. Hmm. Yeah. Beepers and fax machines just completely passed me by. Oh, I carried around a fax machine yeah. on, a, on a backpack, as yeah, was the style, but key. we all did. Uh, not me. Well, that's how we used to pass notes in class, except <laughs> it was very loud, so you often get caught. Yeah, you yeah. have to like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, by the way... Yeah. Crazy monkey going in shit! <laughs> Dunstan scampered over to the minibar near the bathroom. He used the key to unlock it. He took chocolate bars, a bag of crisps, and a large lemonade over to the couch. Yum! 
Dunstan had a feast. Then he picked up the TV remote. He was in the mood for some serious channel surfing. And he watches Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seeds the idea. <laughs> he got a he got a bag of crisps out of the minibar. Yeah, this uh, all the elevators are lifts in this as well. We've got the English version of this book. And so, why is there so much hate on Lord Rutledge? I don't know. Self loathing, obviously. Yeah. What do you think about yum? Yum. I don't understand why anybody has the the need or reason to say yum out loud. I've been around people that go yum when like someone brings out something. Yeah. Or when someone walks by and you're like yum. Yum. And I always think mm-hmm. no, silly. Yum. Um, when you're feeding children. Okay. Yeah. Yum broccoli. Yeah. But this is, for me, it's such a, like, a personal thing to say yum. Like, the author shouldn't say yum. Maybe the author was really hungry. I think the author does, though, try to get into the head of Dunstan, which really should be just all crazy, like... Like, <laughs> <laughs> just insane chaos. Um, I always think that orangutan and monkey um, actors always look really pissed off. Just oh, really angry the whole time. He wasn't pretty, that's for sure. He's a frightening-looking creature. Yeah, yeah, but but still, he, he doesn't look like he's having fun. No. And I understand. He's probably not. He's probably had a lot of torturous animal training to get to, to this stage of stardom. But, I don't know, couldn't they use some shots where maybe he doesn't look like he's really, really unhappy? Well, I think that he must be sedated because although he's going ape shit to a degree that satisfies me, the layman, <laughs> I just feel like he's got a lot more ape shit in him if he, you yeah, know. Yeah. He's holding the, back a bit. They have to sedate him so he doesn't just peel one of the kids' faces off. Um, but look, this gets even better. Yeah. Dunstan took a black ninja outfit from the closet and put it on. From so the this, closet? Yeah. So this is a crazy <laughs> ape shit monkey wearing a ninja outfit. He fastened a money belt around his waist. Let's just say it. He's got a fanny pack. Fanny pack. Um, back. It was a front fanny. Yeah. And he put on a miner's hat with a light on the front. He was ready. Let's go clubbing. Yes. So if you haven't already guessed, uh, Dunstan is going to steal shit from rooms that have been pre-marked by Rutledge with a red sash. But he does pause from work to watch Kyle walk a dog. The boy and dog disappeared into the lift. Dunstan sighed. He wished he had a nice boy like that. What? No, no mistake. No what? coincidence that Cupid showed up so prominently <laughs> at the beginning. That's, that's wrong. He wants a boy. I'm going to get a nice little boy like that. Come here, little boy. And look, look and it's on the cover. Dunstan's just hugging him, just mm. going like, and the kid's like mouthing, help me. Call the police. Uh, and then he breaks into a room and guess what he does? Has a, has a tea party. He goes ape shit! Hey! He turns the dials on the clock radio until loud music blared out. Then he began boogieing around the room. You had me at began boogieing. <laughs> and Kyle nearly loses the dog on the roof. Like, he walks it on the roof and it nearly falls off the roof, but it gets saved by a monster? The face kept coming closer and closer, and then it gave Kyle a big sloppy kiss. Ugh, yelled Kyle. He staggered backwards, wiping his face. There was a monster on the roof. A hairy monster with gross, slobbery kisses. Kyle ran. The monster was after him. This is, this is fucking intense, man. Kyle's body was found by ground staff the next day. His pelvis man, was crushed. Man, this is... Oh. Yeah, you see? This is really sinister. I didn't get this at all. No, <laughs> the book's scary. Yes. Um, so Kyle, he does manage to get away... But nobody believes his dumb story. Because he keeps calling it a monster. Yeah. Or a, a gorilla. Like, get your story straight. He on. doesn't know a lot about countries. He doesn't know a lot about animals. Nope. And back in his room, Dunstan pets a photograph of his lost brother, Samson. Mm-hmm. And, and so Rutledge comes in and he starts taunting him about Samson. Oh, Samson, your brother. And Dunstan just goes fucking ape shit. <laughs> Dunstan wound up like a major, major league pitcher. He hurled the dresser knob. Bam! It bounced off Rutledge's forehead. Knob for a knob. Bam! (laughs) And and Dunstan escapes out the window. So Dunstan, he's just fucking around in the vents like an alien. Yeah. 
and um, a sleepy Kyle wakes up and... Dad! He cried. There's a monster in the bathroom! Yeah, I'm not surprised with the rich food that these kids eat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then halftime, uh, photo <laughs> section. And look, basically lots of great pictures of Dunstan going apeshit like a boss. Oh, he's wearing his little fanny pack. A great full page picture. It's like a leather fanny pack. Of his fanny pack, yeah. And um, it says, so he gets mad. He decides to run away. Um, and then uh, this is, oh, look, Dunstan in a hot tub. <laughs> Dunstan wearing glasses. Dunstan upside down. And Dunstan in a wheelchair wearing a hat and with a blanket <laughs> over him. Dunstan hiding under a table. Uh, and then Dunstan with a family of his very own as well. Uh, that's that's the, the Seinfeld family. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's Kramer, Jerry, yep. and George. Um, so that's really fun. I, I might cut some. I usually don't keep the books, but I might cut some of those out and stick them on my... Uh, <laughs> On my on your crazy monkey wall. On my on my crazy <laughs> monkey wall. If there is space. Yep. You might to, have to move some things. Yep. Um, so yes, Kyle convinces Brian to mm. hunt for the monster and sends him down the laundry chute where he gets covered in dirty sheets. Yeah, and where Brian like says, "No, wait. Before you send me down here, if anything happens to me, I've got a bunch of magazines in my bedroom. Burn them for me. Yeah. Get rid of my porn." I think it's kind of an ironic death, though, then, to be covered in, like, hotel sex sheets uh, and die down there uh, uh, amid the... Because um, people are either in a hotel or either doing it with each other or doing it by themselves. Yep. And uh, regardless, he's right in the thick of it yep. there. It's a soup. <laughs> so... Uh, Rutledge interrupts with his whip, but Dunstan is still, he's not putting up with any of that shit. Dunstan leaned over and grabbed a piece of wood that lay on a bench. While Lord Rutledge pushed Kyle away, Dunstan swung the board. Bam! It hit the nasty man. Rutledge's body was found by cleaning staff two days later. His skull was so badly caved in, it took it on a few days to identify him. <laughs> this Dunstan is violent. Dunstan's really strong. Like, they make, like, oh, wacky slapstick. But, like, an orangutan would knock your fucking head off. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to get in the way. So, uh, Dunstan has made a nest in the boiler room. And now he and Kyle are officially buds. They're like, getting along. For no reason at all. Yep, no they, no development They've here. just got a lot of um, similarities, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. and, and Dunstan heads off into the spa to, to kind of mess around a little bit more. He, this is where he steals the old guy's glasses. And then... Dunstan walked over to the woman with the cucumbers on her eyes. The green stuff on her face looked tasty. He licked it. It was good. Then he plucked off the cucumber slices and popped them into his mouth. In the book as well, like, he runs away before she sees who it is. Like, I think you would have a pretty instant reaction as soon as your face was being licked by yep. uh, a foul-breathed orangutan. Yep. Um, and in the film, didn't wasn't Mrs. DeBrow in this scene? And mm -hmm. Dunstan came in and gave her, like, an exotic massage. Yes. And he, like, was, he was holding her, like, he was fondling her bum. He was kneading it like yep. a, a big old... Pizza dough. Yep. And yeah. she was getting into it. And she was like, oh. She thought it was the, the masseur. She was like, that's excellent. And it turned into, yeah. Like, and then the mass like, Dunstan leaves just as she's, you know, at the right place. And the, the masseur comes back in. And then she, like, you, the, the end of the scene is her grabbing the, the, mass, the masseur and pulling him down, like, for sex, obviously. Yeah. Who is this movie aimed at? That's not in the book. None of that's in the book. Mrs. Brow does not even show up here. Maybe it was ad-libbed. It's kind of like, yes, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, like, she was just going, well, I'm not in this until the crystal ball. <laughs> I'm just going to lay down on the spa set. And then the cameraman went to the director, Dunstan's going into the spa set. And he went, follow him, follow him, follow him. <laughs> and then he, and that all just actually happened. Wow. Amazing. Now, um, I, I wanted to see George Costanza with a monkey, and, and so far it hasn't happened. Has George Costanza even been in it so Not far? really. He's, he, the only thing he's really been in is an expensive suit. Yeah. Um, but then, suddenly, here we go. Dunstan skipped over to the window. He pressed his face flat against the glass. He knew it made his face look so funny. Now all he had to do was wait until the nice man looked up. There, the nice man looked. But why wasn't he laughing? Why was he yelling? Why was he leaping up and down? And look, these two, these two characters, stars of the film, they just get along absolutely famously. 
Dunstan bounded over to Mr. Grant and gave him a big hug. The nice man screeched. So Dunstan screeched back. Wow, the nice man sure squirmed around a lot. And he made such funny hooting sounds. Dunstan hung on. What a wild hug. Mr. Grant's body was found by a bellboy. Just seconds later, his insides had emerged from both ends like someone had applied a hammer to a tube of toothpaste. (laughs) This is really... (laughs) I don't like this. And Dunstan's pretty scary in this book. So, but don't worry, he goes apeshit and that's funny. So, um, Mr. Grant... He doesn't drive a car, though. I like it when a monkey drives a car. I think think that's what you need. But Mr. Grant hires gun-wielding safari man Lafarge to take out Dunstan. Yeah, and this is Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens. And in the film, he has that great monologue about how monkeys are flushed down the toilet by their owners <laughs> yeah. when they when they're not cute anymore because <laughs> they get them at Easter. <laughs> yeah, and then they roam around, and he's using all these props. It's this great Paul Rubens moment. <laughs> None of it is in the book, though. The, the <laughs> book seems absolutely intent at this point on just racing to the finish, and I'm sharing that sentiment. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, is this out of comedy context, comedy corner? Mr. Lafarge began poking the barrel of his gun into nearby bushes. Ah, uh, yep. He was in the yep. spa again. And then uh, Lafarge is foiled because a kid tied his shoelaces together. Oh, yeah. It's pretty lame. Yeah. Um, he brings in a dog that goes for the hotel guest's little dog. Remember the little dog, the man oh, yeah. that had dog the dog? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm more worried about Dunstan, though. Who? Dunstan peeked out from behind the furnace. He gave Kyle a weak smile. Then he held out his arm. It was bleeding. A small piece of green glass stuck out from the cut. Yeah, so... According to the author here, it was green glass because they were in a greenhouse. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think she went to the same school as Kyle. <laughs> Dinosaurus. <laughs> and, um, yep. And then I thought, hang on, no, Dunstan does check in because... What? They do some surgery on him. Um, they so- stitch up his arm or whatever, make him bite down on something, and-, and then decide to give him his own hotel room under the name of... Kyle squinted down at the phone book. Lam Bin Yok, he managed at last. Let's make him Dr. Lam Bin Yok, Brian suggested. If the hotel thinks you're a doctor, you can get away with anything. But then I don't know if they, I don't think they take him down to the reception desk. I think they just take him to the room. <laughs> but. <laughs> this is such a roller coaster of I emotion. know. Dunstan checks in, Dunstan doesn't check in, Dunstan checks in, I don't know Dunstan what... doesn't actually fucking check in. I don't know what to believe. Two minutes later, Kyle and Brian pushed a hotel wheelchair wheelchair down a hallway. In the chair sat Dunstan. He wore a hat, glasses, and an overcoat. With a blanket wrapped around his shoulders, he looked like a small, hairy old man. How (laughs) racist is this? It's like, oh, look, honey, and a ring. Oh, my mistake. Just another Asian. Probably a doctor. (laughs) Probably a doctor. Yeah. (laughs) Why... Why yeah. does he have to be in a wheelchair if he's a doctor? I think they did just take him in there. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think if anyone wants to start a class action suit against the makers of Dunstan Checks In <laughs> based on the grounds that he never actually checks in in the film <laughs> and, and we go and see the film under the false pretenses, then I'm more than happy to get that happening. Um, oh, did you notice this? This stuck out to me in the film as well. Kyle tells Dunstan to be good before leaving him, yeah. which I think is totally an homage to E.T., yeah, yeah. And then also, like, after he says, be good, Dunstan gets drunk on cider and, and jumps in the hot tub. <laughs> it's like total E.T. shenanigans. <laughs> um, but finally, yes, it is the night of the crystal ball. Uh, Rutledge, oh, yeah, crystal ball. Forgot about that. Yes. He uses Indiana Jones, the crystal ball. Yep. Rutledge uses his hacker skills to search the hotel computer for use of the word banana. <laughs> does not understand. This, this movie does not understand anything about databases, but... Whatever. Well, Suspending my disbelief. It was their safe word when they were doing the gimp thing. Uh, and that don't, leads... Don't make your safe word banana when no. you're dealing with a monkey. Pineapple is always Much the, better. the better one. Uh, it leads him to Dunstan's room. He grabs Kyle and... Rutledge dragged Kyle into the bathroom and tied him up. He covered Kyle's mouth with masking tape. Then he filled the bathtub with pillows and shoved Kyle into the tub. Kyle couldn't move. He was so terrified that he could hardly breathe. This is... This is intense. Carl's <laughs> body was never found. Um, and then Dunstan bites Rutledge's ear and escapes. But this is so dumb because he returns to the room a sentence later. He basically, like, swings out the door. Rutledge runs out. Where'd that ape go? And then he swings back in. Um, and he rescues Kyle and they head down in the dumb waiter. And then... Dunstan sat in a wheelchair. He was dressed in his little old man clothes again. 
and he smiled and waved at everybody as Kyle pushed him into the ballroom. Yeah, Kyle's gambit is that everyone is going to be way too <laughs> drunk to notice <laughs> what's going on. He saw Lafarge wearing a purple tuxedo. A lump in his jacket showed Kyle where his tranquilizer gun was. Yikes. Um, so either that, he was just incredibly happy to see him. <laughs> and in the ballroom, guess what? Dunstan goes predictably ape shit because you can take the shit out of an ape, but you can't take the, the ape out of the shit. Exactly. Yes. Dunstan stared at a woman's dress. It was covered in shiny stuff. Gold spangles. Those spangles were so nice. Dunstan tried to pluck one off. Naked woman, yakety sax is playing. <laughs> um, but Dunstan does. He, he grabs more booze. He's stealing booze from out under He's the tables. He's having a good weekend. He's having this great time. Uh, then Rutledge threatens Mr. Grant with a knife, so... As he stepped forward to throw the knife, Dunstan slammed the pan down on his head. Boing. Yeah, don't give me boing, dinosaurs. Like, an orangutan, like, that would be game over, essentially. He exactly. would no longer have a neck. Is it is it here or is it a bit later? Like, this fight scene goes on for a little while, but um, uh, Rutledge gets a bottle of wine off the shelf and is about to hit uh, Costanza over the head with it, and Costanza's like, no, 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 wait, no, that's a really good bottle of wine. And they he looks at the wine, oh, yeah, it is, and he puts it back, and then they, they start going again. <laughs> and I'm, I think... I'm glad that wasn't in the book because uh, my sides were already straining. <laughs> you know you know how sometimes you watch a film and you can, you can pick the line or the scene that... The, the film was based around like someone had a good idea for a joke and then they put a whole fucking film around it i reckon that was the joke well i wondered actually it's funny you say that i was thinking like how does a movie like this happen is it somebody <laughs> like is a producer somewhere watching a tv show or something and they see this performing orangutan and they go mm. oh that's kind of cool we should do it like i can't imagine somebody goes hey there's a hotel and a rat, or is it like George Costanza? They go like Seinfeld's really big. We want to give you a vehicle, and he's like, I've always wanted to work with an orangutan. <laughs> I'm a big fan of every which way but loose. Uh, you know, I don't know how does this happen. Dunstan he swings from a chandelier, We're having a great time, swashbuckling. LaForge tries to shoot him with a tranquilizer, but LaForge must be pissed off his tits because <laughs> he hits the dog guy whose name is Mr. Spalding instead, and then. Kyle looked up just in time to see his dad barge through the door. He held a frying pan in his hand. Kyle thought he looked just like Arnold Schwarzenegger. George Costanza, Arnold Schwarzenegger, often being confused in there. And yep. how often in films? That's the thing. It, it, you forget this because we're so far removed from the 90s now, but whether it was Total Recall, Predator, um, even like going back to things like Commando, mm. that image of Arnie standing there with the frying pan is just <laughs> so strong. Yeah, yeah, burned into yeah, my psyche. Of course the kid's going to think <laughs> that. This is 100% Arnie. I don't know. He's just always <laughs> frying two eggs, and it was brilliant. Um, so then the hotel owner, Mrs. Dubrow, is understandably absolutely furious because she's put a lot of expense time effort energy mm -hmm. into the crystal ball yep, yep. and everything's gone to shit she wants that she wants that sixth star as well and and she like she thinks that rutledge is some kind of hotel inspector who's going to give her the sixth yeah. star sixth star is really hard to say six six gonna star. give her that extra star so she's like trying to uh get costanza to be super nice to rutledge up to this point obviously so she she is and I'm pro capitalism. I think she should be <laughs> yeah. able to, you know, for the success of a hotel, th yeah. th this is a, a worthy dream. Yeah, go all out. Yeah. All out for that sixth star. But instead this happens. Kyle braced himself. He knew Mrs. Dubrow was going to slap him. But all of a sudden, she froze. Kyle glanced up. He saw why. Dunstan was charging full speed ahead at Mrs. Dubrow. Before she could scream, Dunson smashed into her. She staggered forward, landing face down into Chef Bernard's cake. All right, Dunstan, <laughs> cried Kyle. Kyle is just like, fuck it, filled with bloodlust. He's <laughs> just got this red mist in front of his eyes. He is just like, it, it's like the biggest sugar high ever. And um, yeah, we've talked about how strong Dunstan must be. Mm. This is a. Uh, this isn't like the strapping Rupert Everett. This is an old lady that this is super strong orangutan. Yeah. Just like makes each shit. Yeah. And, and and kids are cheering, going, "Yeah, take that, you old bitch." Although to be fair, eat that cake. To, to be fair, I reckon it would be super fun to just jump into a giant cake. 
Yeah, but would you want like a super strong um, primate smashing you in there? No, no, I'd, I'd want to do it in, on my own terms. I want to jump into that cake. I don't want to be pushed. I, I heard of um, some ladies that sit on cakes. Really? Yeah. Is that a sex thing? Uh, maybe. I'm going to think about that and get back to you. That'd be cake it too. <laughs> <laughs> so she um, goes to, to fire Mr. Grant. And why wouldn't you at this point? Yeah, exactly. But it turns out that Mr. Spalding, the dog guy, was the hotel inspector all along. And he gives her Twist. one star. One star. And knocks her back into the cake. One star and a caking. A caking. Not yeah. a one extra star, yeah. but just one star in total. I think if you're, it's consensual caking, that's fine. Yeah, consensual caking. Totally yeah. cool. I'm not. I'm not afraid to admit it. Sometimes after we'd won um, a big game in Knocky Trunky, we'd yeah. have a big caking. Yeah. Whole group of us. Yeah. Total group big caking. caking. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, it was a bit awkward afterwards. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm I'm a bit younger than you, yeah, so we like, didn't, we didn't talk- go the full cake. Yeah. It's like, what do you talk about after a caking? Sprinkles. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. I, mean, I was younger then. Um, so the police arrest Rutledge. Lafarge apologises to Dunstan for everything he's done because Lafarge says, you know, it was just a job. Exactly. I was hired to tranquilize you. I thought you were a threat. I'm really sorry, Dunstan. And to be fair, he was a threat. He caked someone. Yeah. So he's like, it's nothing personal and this happens. Dunstan looked at Kyle. Kyle nodded. And Dunstan belted Mr. Lafarge right on the jaw. Totally consistent with established American values. The only way to handle someone who is pussy enough to apologise to you <laughs> is to the punch face. them in the face. And we at, should keep at a the tally. the of a like, like nine-year-old kid. Yeah, we should keep a tally of this because there are so... Pretty much every kid's book ends with somebody punching someone yes. else in the face and the audience cheering. That yeah. is like the American way... <laughs> And it's, you, it's always someone who's been defeated. Yeah. They're done. Yeah, they're totally done. There's nothing more for them to totally do. Totally done. Except their consciousness. And then the hero goes, smack, motherfucker, and, like, just breaks their nose or whatever, and everyone goes, yeah, America. Finally. Finally Whew. the climax. Justice. Um, and then Mr. DeBrow offers Mr. Grant a new position of his choosing because I guess he was glad to see his wife get a dick knocked in the dirt at the grand ball, humiliated in front of everyone, and I guess he likes losing money. Yeah, I thought that... I thought the whole thing was that he wasn't even there, that she was there by herself. She kept... Well, she said to the masseur that her husband wasn't around, and then he was he was there. Turns out he was there the whole time. It's a very confusing film. I, yeah. I think um, they're all punch drunk by this stage. <laughs> They've just all been in the melee. <laughs> Okay, now let us read the ending, which I have not read. I saved this for when uh, <laughs> we were sitting together. This is this is great because the YouTube clip cut off. Oh, the end, so, it's, uh, so it's going to be a surprise for me. Perfect. As well. About a year later, Kyle stood with his brother and his father in the courtyard of their new hotel. The tropical sun was bright up above, glinting off the clear blue water that surrounded the Bali Majestic Hotel. Kyle's dad didn't wear suits anymore. Whoa, whoa. No. Oh. Now he wore shorts. What? And even though the Bali Majestic didn't have spear guns, Kyle thought it was a whole lot more exciting than the stuffy old hotel in New York City. Besides, no one was bothered here if monkeys were around. Kyle listened as his father greeted their special guest, Mr. Spaulding. The big man scowled at Kyle, but his dog, Neil, (laughs) yipped happily. Mr. Spaulding, said Mr. Grant. I cannot tell you how pleased we are that you've come to rate the Bali Majestic. My family and I are dedicated to making your stay at the Bali uneventful and trouble-free. Kyle wasn't really listening. He was too busy looking for Dunstan. Finally, he spotted his friend. Dunstan sat at the top of a coconut tree, but he wasn't alone. A female orangutan sat next to Dunstan. Mrs. Dunstan. (laughs) And in her arms, she held a baby orangutan, Dunstan Jr., But what Kyle noticed most was the coconut in Dunstan's hand. The coconut that Dunstan was getting you, getting ready to throw. To throw at Mr. Spaulding. No, cried Kyle. Dunstan, not again. But Dunstan just grinned as he wound up to toss the coconut. Why not have some fun? No matter what he did, 
Dunstan knew his human family would always love him. Those are some messed up values. <laughs> no matter how many people Dunstan hurt or murdered, he knew that his ridiculous American family would cheer him on. And they would just move from country to country. <laughs> Trail of dead bodies uh, behind them. With uh, bones crushed to powder. Yeah! Tossed coconuts. And that was Dunstan Chucks Up. That was the, the, the whole thing. So, I've got to ask, Lizzie, was the book better? I got about two minutes into the film and I lost the will to live. Yeah. This was the worst thing I've ever watched. And I've been watching a lot of Netflix lately, so I've been watching <sighs> some pretty quality stuff. This was a little bit of a departure. Yep. Just yep. a little bit of a departure. Yeah, I kind of got to wonder why we would even do this in the first place, <laughs> but uh, here we are. I did even, in fact, specifically buy this book on eBay <laughs> because I thought, well, oh, crazy monkeys going ape shit. Uh, wh- what have we got to lose? So, yeah, I'm going to side with the book. I'm, I'm going to side with Dinosaurus. So am I. Yeah. I'm going to say the book has to be fucking better than that movie. It was quite entertaining, the book, because it was so sinister and crazy. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think, I, I just can't accept a film called Dunstan Checks In where he never checks in. <laughs> I, I find that really quite troubling the more I think about it. <laughs> so, um, I've got one review on Amazon. Okay. Uh, which I'd love to share with you. All right. And see what you think. I enjoyed reading this book. I enjoyed reading it because it was really exciting and it gets me hooked into it. It makes me laugh so hard that my tears come out. <laughs> Do you like to jump around? Well, this orangutan does. My favourite part of this book is when Kyle, a boy who lives in the hotel with his brother and his dad, who was the boss of the hotel, knocks on a chest and the chest knocks back. Knocky Trunky! Knocky Trunky fan right here. <laughs> I bet you know who knocked back! I certainly do. I reckon this guy's going to have a lot of knockbacks <laughs> in his future. Um, I recommend this book to third graders to sixth graders because they know when to laugh and when not to. <laughs> Little kids... <laughs> may think the cover is funny and not the book. (laughs) This book is similar to another book called Monkey Trouble, which is about a girl and a monkey. If you like funny and easy to read books, try this book out. (laughs) I think I... That is good advice at the end, though. I mean, you might laugh, but uh, I will try out Monkey Trouble. That's little Thora Birch and a monkey. About a girl and a monkey. Yeah. And, um... But you are not a third to sixth grader. Do you know when to laugh? Do you know when not to laugh? When to laugh and when not to! <laughs> I like just, you know, little kids, they may think the cover is funny and not the book, which shows That's how ridiculous. fucking unsophisticated little kids. little kids are. Ridiculous. Really. You wait until you get to third or sixth grade. Yeah. And then you'll appreciate. You'll know. You'll know all about books. The contents. Yeah. And covers. And yeah. And laughing. Judging. Laughing at the right thing. Yeah. When so, not to. So, monkey, if anyone wants to send monkey trouble, I definitely will <laughs> we'll give that a read. Because, monkey, monkey. Uh, you know, it sounds fantastic. It, it sounds, um, and it sounds relatable as well, which I think is really great. I think mean, that's what I look for in a book. I think most of life is about a girl and a monkey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Causing trouble. Do you think she's going to solve that trouble? Ah, uh, probably. Hmm. No. Well, <laughs> should find out. All right. Well, that that's our show, pretty much. Uh, I would just like to thank everybody for listening. I would like to encourage people to go to fruitlesspursuits.com to find out what we're doing. We have other podcasts. There's FP Cast every Monday where Jacinta and myself talk about f- film reviews and, and pop culture news and things like that. How much do you talk about... Crazy monkeys. Going Not action. enough, which is why this is it is my true passion and why yeah. it's good to be able to do something like this. I mean, look, we go and see films and things, and um, but the whole time I'm really like I gave Crimson Peak a pretty average review because uh, no monkeys. Great opportunity to have monkeys mm. uh, in that. Um, you know, jumping out of cupboards and uh, or in the bath, or yep. running around, scaring people. Driving. They had a lot of ornate um, light fittings that uh, I thought, oh, wouldn't that be great if a monkey was Perfect swinging monkey on Perfect monkey photo. And it's not even, you know, the thing is, back in the day, like this movie obviously decided to have a monkey. Yeah. Now, obviously. Green, you know, green screens, computer animation and stuff. A director can sit there in the editing bay, watch a scene, and go, just add a couple of monkeys. Let's just see what it looks like. Yeah. So, really, there's no excuse. Add some monkeys, take some monkeys out, 
Try to work out the optimal Shuffle around monkey. the monkeys. What's the perfect number of, mm. of monkeys? Um, Brad Pitt would tell you it's 12. Yeah. I'm open to uh, any number. Yeah, yeah, I don't like to be hedged into any, yeah. any definitive answer. Because well, well, different monkeys, different situations. There's a whole planet in uh, some films. Whole planet of monkeys. Whole planet, yep. I'm fine with that. Although on that planet there were only really about 12 of them. That's true. It's the Ewoks were kind of the same like that. You think, oh, there's so many Ewoks. And especially when you watch like their spin-off films. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're like, there's so many Ewoks. Caravan of Courage. And you're like, there's three Ewoks. And they just, <laughs> just keep wearing different hats in the background. <laughs> very, very suspicious. So, uh, yes. Uh, Sorry, I in conclusion, for, for this Crimson Peak needs more monkeys. Yeah, so so that uh, if you're a super fan, you can support on Patreon. dot com. I know that I'm going to be using uh, some of the funds that you guys have donated through there to advertise the show. I, I want to put it back into the show, and I, I want to get uh, expand our listening base. So anything you can help there would be really wonderful. Because otherwise, it's just you opening your window and shouting. That's right, which is how we used to podcast yeah, in the nineties. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I had a great show about Seinfeld, and I would just watch the <laughs> episode and then yell a recap yeah. uh, out the window. Yeah. I kept missing them, though, because, you know, sometimes you don't know where, the, where they were being broadcast from. Yeah. And um, wind, weather, all that sort of stuff would come into play. Mm. Uh, but do support those things, and if you want to come and join such uh, heady intellectual discussions like the one <laughs> ones we've been having today... Uh, we've got a Facebook discussion group. It's called The Book Was Better, comma, FP Cast, comma, Scarjo, a go go discussion, I think, something like that. This will be up there. Introduce us, introduce, do what you want, do whatever you like. <laughs> Thank you so no much, no rules. Lizzie. It, it's been always just an absolute pleasure to have you here. I always pleasure look forward to, be to it. Yeah, Lucas. And no it's problem. always very, very funny. So, thank you so much. No worries. And I apologise for even making you, you know, like <laughs> look at this film because I don't, I don't know what what compels us to continue to do things like that. <laughs> no, I don't know. I complain a lot, but um, at least now I never, ever have to watch this film ever again. You're informed. I am. I'm fully informed about how terrible it was. I mean, it's video stores aren't around that much. Mm. Um, but if you catch someone on Twitter going... Uh, Friday night, yeah, gonna watch uh, Dunstan Checks In with my boo. You can actually go... Like, nah, uh nah, uh you better step off. Well, yeah, or, you know, make your own decision. You and your boo watch what you want, but <laughs> just want to forewarn you, he doesn't actually check in. So <laughs> if that colours your excitement, your enthusiasm for this, that, and they will be like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. But then you're like, hashtag Lucky Trunky, and they're like, well, <laughs> maybe I'll give it a little bit of a, give it a look. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Lizzie. There have got to be better Lucky Trunky films out there, though. Yeah. Man, this is not, this is not one of the best. Okay, yes, that's your mission on the Facebook discussion <laughs> page. If you can think of any other film where someone plays Lucky Trunky, and it, it, bonus points for screen cap or YouTube clip, uh, we want to know, Lucky Trunky, we're going to start a league. <laughs> Nucky Trunky Trophy. Design a um, design our like jerseys for our Nucky <laughs> Trunky team. All right, thanks again, Lizzie. Thank you. I'm gonna say the thing. I catch you on the flip. Nucky Trunky. <laughs> <laughs>